Okay, welcome to uh, Chapter 3, Section 3B. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to continue on from our last discussion. And if you remember, we kind of finished up with uh, orbitals. And here was an example of the orbitals that we had um, gone over. There's, a, there's an F orbitals. There's seven of those, and I don't have a picture of that. But they get even more odd-looking than the, the D orbitals. But what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to try and come up with a way to put the electrons in the atom where they go in these corresponding orbitals. And there are some basic rules, and you're going to find that it's kind of confusing at first, but then after a while it gets pretty straightforward, pretty simple. All right, so what we're going to do is known as the electron configuration. And all the electron configuration means is what I've got right here. It's just the arrangement of the electrons in an atom. And if you remember our Bohr model right here where we've got this energy level 1, energy level 2, energy level 3, you can imagine these circles get bigger and bigger further and further out. Well, what kind of dictates uh, the idea of where the electrons go in the atom? Because now, you know, remember we have that model of just a very teeny tiny nucleus surrounded by a sphere or fuzzy cloud of electrons. Um, well, the, the, the overriding principle is how much energy they have determines where they go. Those electrons with the lowest energy, uh, energy will go into the lowest levels. And then uh, as the energy goes up, as the energy increases, you're going further out. So the closer an atom is to the nucleus, the lower energy it possesses. And how much energy it possesses is directly dependent upon which orbital it fills. Um, and just kind of for general purposes, uh, an s orbital if it's on the same energy level, has less energy than a p orbital, and that p orbital has less energy than a d orbital, and that's having to do with them being in the same energy level. So now that we've got this idea of, okay, we can place these electrons in the orbitals, how are we going to figure this out? And there's two ways. There's a chart that's pretty handy. It looks like this. All right. And then there's also your periodic table that, of course, looks like that. What you really need to have is your periodic table right now because I'm going to show you numbers to write on this periodic table so that you can use that at any time and you don't have to memorize this chart. There's another uh, diagonal chart that's in your book that kind of goes like this with the different levels that I had to memorize in college, but we're not going to do that. We're going to try and make it a little easier. So um, let's just go ahead and, and figure out how the electrons are going to fill up these orbitals. And I, I kind of like to think of this whole thing as, it's a little cheesy, the electron motel. Okay? And imagine all of these circles right here are represented by orbitals. All right, and electrons will fill the orbitals, and they'll fill those orbitals depending upon um, how much energy they have. So there are a few guiding principles or guiding rules that will help us determine where these electrons go, and I want to go over a couple of them to show you how we're going to do this. The first one is the Aufbau principle. Now, the Aufbau principle just states that an electron occupies the lowest energy orbital that can receive it. Um, in other words, electrons are going to fill the lowest energy level first. Now if you look on the diagram here, you can see energy right here, right? And you can see as you go from down here to up, the energy is increasing. So that means this, this orbital right here, this 1s, has the lowest energy of all. Then a 2s has a little more energy, and then a 2p has more energy and so on and so on. All right. So when electrons are filling orbitals, they're going to fill up the lowest energy level first. For example, let's say I have a helium atom. All right. One atom of helium has two electrons. 
Now, how do I know that? Well, if I look on the periodic table, there's helium right here. It's its element, uh, it's number two. That means it's got two protons. And as we know, if it has two protons, it's got two electrons. So where are the, the orbitals, or where are the electrons going to go? Well, they're going to fill the lowest orbital first. So I'm going to put one right here, and we draw with an up arrow and a down arrow. By the way, my arrows are going to look like this. It's just kind of convention to write it like that. I don't know if saving time versus writing that, but this is the way I'm going to write them, just out of habit. Okay, so the two electrons of helium go in the first energy level, okay, in the 1s. Now when we say s, you have to think about this, this s orbital, which is a spherical shape, right? Well, what's the next element? Well, after helium comes the element lithium. How many electrons does lithium have? It has three electrons, right? Okay, well, where would that uh, third electron go? Well, this is filled right here, right? So the first two electrons go in the 1s. Where would that third electron go? It would go in the next available orbital, or if you want to use the motel an an analogy, the next available room, and it would go right here. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if you draw an up arrow first or a down arrow first, but I typically draw an up arrow first. All right? So there's that. What about the next element? Beryllium. How many electrons? Four electrons, right? Okay. So where's that fourth electron going to go? Well, it's going to go right here. All right? Now, there's a couple other things that we need to know um, because one of you might go, well, why don't you put one, one arrow here, one arrow there, one arrow there, one arrow there, right? But remember, we have to um, put the, the electrons in the lowest energy uh, orbital that's available to it, all right? But how come we only put two electrons in an orbital, all right? Well, it turns out that... Uh, We've got a principle for that, too, and that's the Pauli exclusion principle. And this is the simple version of it. Basically, you could only put two electrons in a single orbital. All right? Now, what that means from our orbital diagram, and again, this is probably a video you're going to be rewinding and pausing and everything, is every one of these colors, these orbitals, the blue, the peanut, the double peanut, all of those orbitals can only hold, oops, only can hold two electrons. All right? That's what the Pauli exclusion principle tells us. There's a little more to it, but for our purposes right now, we're just going to go with that. So it doesn't matter how many electrons are available, you could put two here. If you want to imagine an electron there, an electron there. Or you could put two there, or you could put one in here. Or again, this is one whole orbital, right? So you can only put two electrons per orbital. That's the Pauli exclusion principle. So that's kind of why I'm putting two arrows in here. All right. Let's go to uh, the next element, boron. Right. Like this class, sometimes you're saying to yourself, okay, five electrons. Right. Element number five, five electrons. Where does that next electron go? Well, you know it's got to go to the lowest energy orbital that can receive it. Right. So what's next? What's after this? Uh, 2s orbital. Well, let's see on our diagram here. Oh, it's a 2p orbital. And look at this. It turns out, in, in my diagram here, I've got three circles. Why do I have three circles representing the 2p orbitals? Well, let's look at our picture over here. Okay, there's a p orbital on the x-axis, p orbital on the y-axis, a p orbital on the z-axis. So there are three p orbitals. 1s orbital, 3p orbitals. All right. So that fifth electron will go right here. Okay. So there you have it. So that's representing the first five electrons. What about the next one? I know this seems t tedious, but just bear with me because there's a lot of little tricks to this. What about carbon? Carbon has six electrons, right? Now you might want to at this point go, well, I'm going to put this other arrow right here, all right? But it turns out you can't. And why, you ask? Well, because of Hund's rule. Hund's rule states that 
Electrons will fill all orbitals with equal energy with one electron before they pair up. All right. Now, what that means is that we're going to have an electron in every one of these orbitals right here before they're willing to pair up. It has to do with energy. All right. It takes more energy to pair up a couple electrons in an orbital, orbital than it does to allow them to have their own orbital. Or kind of like, think of it this way. You and your little brother or little sister have an option. You can have your own rooms, or you can share a room. What's the choice? Well, obviously, you're going to take your own room. So Hunt's rule says that, you know what, before these pair up, if there are any orbitals along the same energy level, and that's what the 2p is, they will uh, occupy each orbital. The reason we paired them up here is because there are no other orbitals in the 2s, and there are no other orbitals in the 1s. All right? So that's a real important concept. Those three rules will allow you to do this with no trouble. Now what I want you to do, if you could, I'm going to circle an element. How about sodium right here? Okay. I want you to place the 11 electrons of sodium in that orbital diagram. So take a moment and do that. Pause the video, and then I'll show you uh, what I would do. So here, let me, if you want to pause, let's do this. I'm going to erase that. So go ahead and put those in there, um, and we'll see how it goes. All right, did you get it? Well, how many protons does one atom of sodium, pardon me, how many electrons does one atom of sodium have? It has 11, right? Okay, so I've got to put them in their rooms. I've got to put them in their orbitals. The rule is you've got to go to the lowest energy level first. I'm going to put one electron there, and I'm going to put the other electron there, right? Lowest energy level first. I'm going to pair them up uh, if there's no other energy uh, sublevels in, in that uh, energy level. Where does electrons 3 and 4 go? Right there, right? Electrons 5, 6, 7... Go right there. Again, I'm filling up the separate orbitals first. 8, 9, 10. And where does electron 11 go? Right there. Hey, is that what you got? Hopefully you did. All right. So that's the idea. We're trying to put these, these electrons in uh, these certain levels. And it's really a straightforward procedure once you do it. But at first it looks, it looks a little odd. And uh, we're just going to keep practicing it. All right, so what we, what we want to do is have a way to write this out. You're not going to be asked to draw this bubble diagram uh, every time we uh, have, to, have to do this. So there's a couple ways we do electron configuration. And let me show them to you. The first way is just called orbital notation. And what you do is uh, you write a dash for the orbital and its energy level and which orbital it is. Okay, so for a helium, as you can imagine, I would have one up and one down, right? So that would be the orbital notation of, of helium. Okay, what about carbon? You look on the periodic table, carbon has six electrons, right? So carbon has one electron there, one electron there. There's one, two, three, four, and then five, and... I'm going to put it there, correct? Okay, so there's the orbital notation. Notice what we're doing. We're writing the energy level and the orbital, and we're writing how many orbitals there are per energy level. Okay, and the way it goes is S, there's one orbital, P's, there are three orbitals, D, there's five orbitals. Okay, so take a moment, pause the video. Do the orbital notation for fluorine and magnesium. All right, how'd you do? Let's find how many electrons there are in fluorine. Okay, fluorine has a total of nine electrons, right? Well, let's fill them out. So I've got nine electrons to place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Every orbital in that uh, sublevel gets its own electron before they pair up. That's Hund's rule. Eight and nine. So there's nine electrons represented. 
What about magnesium? How many electrons? 12 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Right? That's called orbital notation.